So I might fall over. If I do pick me up, I want to finish this. I wanted to come here today to tell you a story. Um, I wanted to make accessibility really personal. I wanted to walk you through an experience. And so I sat down to write it, and I couldn't. Uh, no one in my family is differently abled. That's not why I care about accessibility. So I couldn't write that story because it wasn't my story, it wasn't real to me. So I'm gonna tell you my story, why I care about accessibility, and hopefully we will all find something to relate to. I care about accessibility because I'm paid to. It's my job. I work for J.P. Morgan Chase where we use Ember to build accessible applications. Big, giant ones. I work on a UI add-on where I provide accessible components. Those go into engines. That goes into a huge app. It's huge. We have a federal requirement to provide accessible products. And when I joined the team, we didn't really have anybody who could help us figure out how do I take these specs and translate them into Ember reality. So I learned it. I also care about accessibility because I care about web standards. This June will be 22 years since I first started programming. And over the last 22 years, I have come to love and deeply appreciate that web standards and specs exist. They help me architect better solutions because I know how things are supposed to work. Supposed to, right? Theory. But still, it's very helpful to know this. Um, so it's awesome. There's also an accessibility spec. And before I try to say this, I'm going to drink. Mm. Um, known as WAI ARIA, which stands for Web Accessibility Initiative for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And because there's quite a few of these, we're going to quickly review some of the ones that you might commonly hear. Access what's accessibility? It's making your websites or your applications usable by people of all different types of abilities. And it really seeks to answer the question, can users of all ability levels use my application in the way it was designed to be used? So not that weird stuff your QA team does where it's like 99 and then blue and then who uses it like that? Nobody, okay. Um, another common term is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, which is on version 2.0. Uh, there's three levels in WCAG. We have A, which is the, the base level, the kind of the easiest one to hit. We have AA. If you are required by law to make an accessible product, this is probably the level that you're going to have to meet. And there's AAA, which encompasses both A and AA and extends it. And that gets even deeper and is more complex. The Americans with Disabilities Act is often referred to as ADA. And countries like the UK, Portugal, Canada, Australia, they also have similar laws. So wherever you're programming for, check for those. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see this hashtag a lot, A11Y. If you took the word accessibility and you counted the letters between the A and the Y, there's 11 of them, hence A11Y. It's also great because you get more characters on Twitter if you shorten the hashtag, <laughs> which was a problem, not anymore, but it was. Um, I care about accessibility because the future is cool and the future is now. This is
is exciting to me. Like, as a kid, I was so much like, oh, I wish superhero movies existed. And now I'm a grown-up going, oh my god, there's so many of them. It's so awesome. I'm so excited. So the future is now. Like, we're living in the future, right? And there's been some incredible accessibility technology in um, progress. So let's look at some of them. We are giving people back the ability to see colors. These glasses you can get, you put them on and they allow you to see color, they allow colorblind people to see color. There's 300 million people in the world who have some form of colorblindness. Isn't that crazy? So, and I thought something was interesting about these. Um, did you know colorblind people are often surprised to find out that peanut butter is not green? Right? I thought that was really weird. I would not eat green peanut butter. I don't know about you, but no way. <laughs> we are also giving people the ability to hear who couldn't hear. Uh, doctors at UNC School of Medicine in Chapel Hill performed an auditory brain, I'm sorry, this is hard, auditory brain stem implant surgery. This is a picture of this little boy who um, had the surgery. Sorry. And he was able to hear his father's voice. And this is that moment, the first time he heard his father's voice. Microsoft, big business even. Yay, big business. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yay. OK. Um, has developed a service called Video Indexer. And it does the stuff you'd expect. It provides um, transcriptions. It provides real-time translations. It can even analyze the sentiment or how the speaker was feeling based on their um, expressions, which, okay. Um, and then you can use it to adjust the language model. So this would be cool for accessibility because you could make the language model simpler. You could translate it to target a different audience, which means one talk could be, you could reach more people with one talk. That's very cool. And even down to simpler things. Uh, Include is a project started by a student at Stanford. His father was blind. He had the story. And he is starting this project to try to add alt text to images on the internet in an easier way. So people out there are trying to solve these problems, and they're doing a pretty cool job. There's just more stuff to do, right? So. Um, what about you? All of these things are cool, and, but we have to, I stopped asking myself this, so I'm going to ask all of you this, what will you create? Maybe we're not going to make glasses, but maybe there's some stuff we could do in Ember. Hmm, that's pretty cool. When I see these advances in technology, I am, I feel empowered to be curious, to think about what's possible. And that is so exciting to me. Even in our own community, there is innovation on how we provide accessible solutions. We now have an accessibility uh, Zoe and Tomster. Yeah. So that's exciting. Woohoo! Thank you, Lindsay. Um, we're going to go over accessibility in Ember and Ember add-ons in just a sec, but before we do that, I think I want us to address, to think about, to face, to acknowledge some of the reasons why accessibility is hard. Accessibility is emotional, and we can't really do anything about it until we're willing to face this. It's emotional for our users, who are trying to just perform the tasks for their daily lives. Uh, they're trying to buy presents for their families. They're trying to use our really cool new service that we forgot to make accessible. We're losing money because we're not including them. And they feel frustrated, they feel isolated, and why don't they care? And I can shop at some places, but not others, so I know it's possible. And it can just feel really overwhelming and daunting and, oh, well, that sucks. How do you feel when someone excludes you? It's not a nice feeling. Pretty crappy feeling, actually. 
Accessibility is also emotional for developers. Project managers who are like, I needed this yesterday. And you're like, OK, but no. And they're like, yeah. Right? <laughs> and then you have a team lead who's like, oh, just ship it now. We'll fix it later. Yeah, OK. But when does later ever come, right? Never. What if we're feeling, I, I'm just going to put this question out there. And, and don't feel bad about it. Just putting this question out there. What if we're failing our users when we're not the technical experts they hired us to be? When we don't take ownership, when we don't do that little bit of pushback, like, hey, we got to do this, it's going to take a little bit longer. What if we're failing at that point? What if we could be the technical experts we were hired to be? How cool would that be? How empowering would that be? It's very empowering, I promise. I tried it. It's, it works. We also have this thing, like, I need to be a ninja, rock star, unicorn. I need to prove to everyone that I'm super elite. Um, do you, though? <laughs> Maybe you could free yourself from that if you wanted. Uh, and if you don't, then, you know, this will probably happen. You'll probably crash and burn and uh, burn out, and I'd like, love to save you from that. Um, but when you think about all those things and how emotional accessibility really is, I can totally get why it's easy to ignore. I completely have empathy for that, and I understand that. Accessibility is also hard because it can be difficult to get correct when you're first starting out. I had to read the accessibility spec like four times before I even understood the words they were using. I was like, what? That word does not mean what I think it means. And like I had to go through this process of reading and trying and reading and trying. Oh, that's what they meant. OK. So we're getting farther, but it's hard. It's OK, though. Um, so now let's talk about some of the hard problems in Ember. Um, I wouldn't say hard problems. How about I say challenges? We'll put it like that, challenges. All right, one of the things we love about Ember is routing, right? Tiny little problem with it um, that maybe we could brainstorm on. Uh, route transitions. So when you click on a link and it takes you, it loads that, you know, just that little tiny outlet right there, um, a screen reader doesn't recognize that something new has been added, so it will just be quiet, it will silent. Totally sick. So you click the link and just link pressed, and then nothing. We have some um, add-ons that kind of try to help solve this problem, but I wonder, I wonder if we could solve this in Ember itself, so we didn't need an add-on for it. Maybe, maybe not. Totally okay either way. Just something to think about. Modals, modals are pretty hard in Ember or single page applications, or in the world, in general, just pop-ups, right? Uh, try not to use them, maybe. That would be nice. I'd really love it if you tried to not use pop-ups. But if you have to, right? There's ways to make them accessible, but could we figure out a way universally? They're going to probably exist, so can we trap the focus, please? The focus needs to stay in the modal and not go outside of the modal. When it's there, it needs to be there until someone pushes escape or closes it or clicks the submit button or something. It, you shouldn't be able to get to the other stuff behind, and that's a really terrible experience for someone with assistive technology. Which, OK, assistive technology, AT, I'm just going to call it AT from now on during this talk because assistive technology is really hard to say. Like, try it 10 times fast. All right, so thanks for bearing with me. ARIA attribute support. Um, so there's a specific set of rules for what things should have ARIA label or ARIA described by or ARIA labeled by. And there's, they go on specific elements and specific contexts. And there's this really nice rule set. Um, and that can tend to be difficult. But it's a rule set, and we're engineers. We like rules, right, to write rules for things. I wonder if we could figure that out. Probably, right? Maybe. I don't know. Just think about it. Um, it's also awesome that you can add an action to anything. 
it's also not awesome for accessibility. Because whatever you can do with a click, you also need to be able to do with a keyboard. And there's some rules about whether it's enter or space or enter and space or those kinds of things. And we have to think about that. Uh, you can't put interactive elements inside other interactive elements. That's a big no-no. So do you really need to make that giant outside thing clickable? We could maybe think about these things. Again, there's no hard or fast rules. Well, there is. It's called the spec. But it has a lot of, <laughs> it has a lot of leeway for you to kind of switch around a little bit. And this is not really an Ember thing, but there's some really br brilliant people in this room, so I kind of want to put this bug out there. Have you ever tried to use AT and um, a password? Put your password. I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on what happens. It reads out star, 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 star. OK, that doesn't really work, does it? That doesn't tell me anything meaningful. If I'm not looking at the screen, I'm just hearing star, star. Oh, what if I didn't type that capital quite correctly or that pound, hash, whatever thing, that sucks. And maybe it's a bigger sign that passwords in general are broken and we really need to come up with a way that we keep the bad guys out and let us in and maybe that, whatever that is, isn't working. So there, but what I'm trying to say is not how to do it, but this is a problem, let's think bigger. It's a lot of work. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but there are some easier things. There are some superheroes in this story. So um, don't worry, it's not me. I'm not trying to, I'm not the superhero. And I'm not going to say something cheesy like there's a superhero in all of you or there's a hero in all. <laughs> no, the, the superhero of this story is web standards. Um, <laughs> 22 years, y'all. So I see these cycles. I see these things that were they're old and they're new again. And I spent the first five years of my career taking out inline styles. And now y'all are telling me to put them back in. And uh, have you lost your minds? No, really. So <laughs> there are some of the, there's some easy things. Easy. And I air quotes easy. It's relative, right? I think they're easy, though, and I think over time you may agree with me. Um, use semantic HTML. Use HTML5, use HTML5, use HTML5. Anytime that you go to reach for a div when there's a semantic HTML, I'm going to do this, like this look. This is my mommy look. <laughs> fix yourself before I have to fix you, is what that look says. I hope you think of this when you reach for that div instead of the H1. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I understand there's nuance, and some of you will come up after me or come up to me after this. Just am I being pedantic or am I being nuanced? Ask yourself that question first, please. <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> link versus button. Yes. Use the link if it's a route. Use a button if it does a button thing, like close something or submit something or toggle something. Some people will care if it looks like a link or looks like a button. Nope, I am telling you, please, as step one, if it routes to a URL, use a link. You can make it look like a button if you have to, if the designers are yelling at you. But we have rules for this. Link versus button. Please do that first. You can give it the link, the class of button, if you absolutely must. Well, maybe not, but OK. I'll understand. I'm saying this is the first level. Keyboard navigation. Um, huh, I'm going to try this. All right. Uh, if your mouse can do it, your keyboard has to be able to do it. So they should be singing back and forth. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So. <laughs> Add keyboard navigation, please. Up, down, arrows, they work quite well. And don't get fancy. I'm going to say that, because y'all are going to be tempted to get fancy on me. And there are keyboard um, shortcuts already in assist 
assistive technology. Oh, AT, yay, okay. There are keyboard shortcuts already in AT, and there's lists you can find online that will tell you what those are, but usually really enthusiastic people, I know I tried it a few times, they'll be like, oh, we could just make it so when the button, they press B, guess what? AT already did that for you, so don't add those. Just do the extra uh, arrow key navigation kind of things. Check your color contrast, please. Um, I believe this is in Chrome DevTools now in modern. I work on Windows and we're kind of, you know, in the dark ages a little bit, but uh, we're a few versions behind on Chrome. But I think this is in current Chrome, right? You can check color contrast for things. There's also like a thousand tools out there, so you don't even have to like build anything. You can just Google it. Super easy one to fix. And talk to me later if you think your designers will get pissed because I have some advice. Um, and add alt text to your images when it's relevant. This is another easy place. And let's, let's look at this one. Um, maybe your image is just for show. Maybe your image, you put it in a, like an article or something because it's breaking up this giant wall of text and you're doing a toy review and you want to talk about how, how Elmo is awesome for little kids and adults hate it and whatever. Um, so in those instances, you would leave the alt tag. It still needs to be there. Leave it there, please. But it needs to be blank, and you can add the role of presentation. Or if you're shopping and you need to add a description because actually knowing what Elmo is or looks like or something is very important to which one you're going to buy. You don't just say Elmo toy either. You can look at this. Um, a fuzzy red stuffed toy with a round orange nose and round eyes on the top of the set. It actually sounds kind of freaky if you... <laughs> I really worked on this one for a while. I was like, oh, I don't know. It just came out kind of scary every time, so... But, you know. Really, nephew, is that the one you really want? It sounds terrible. Um, Despite these easy wins being relatively easy to find or do, and you could pick up some gains, uh, we still fight as developers and engineers. And I'm not here to tell you to stop fighting, actually. <laughs> we have fights like these, right? I mean, you're all laughing because you've all been in this fight, right? And to me, this fight's kind of like, okay, if you want to. I don't really care about this fight. Just set it in the editor and I'll just run it. And don't make me think about it, please. Uh, it's kind of like um, Batman versus Superman fight. Like, I knew they were superheroes. I knew it was going to be epic. It was going to be awesome. But I didn't really care which one won. <laughs> so I care about accessibility. So I'm not going to tell you to not fight. I'm going to give you something different to fight about. Yeah. Um, how about your position on the div element instead of the native semantic HTML element? Hmm, that's a good fight to have. Um, you could add a role. You could add, add the ARIA level, and you could use this div, and that's, this is fine. Um, this is what happens if you use an H1, though. So if you like the tabs versus spaces fight, maybe have this fight instead. Which one is easier? Which one is really fine? Fight about that one. And this is, a, in my opinion, a more epic fight, kind of like um, Black Panther and Gold Jaguar. I mean, wow. Uh, I prefer this kind of a fight, um, if you have to fight. Of course, maybe I more want it to be like Thor versus Hulk, where they're still friends at the end kind of fight. That, I think maybe that one's better. I know. Uh, this is all exploding your brains right now. That's okay. Um, and some of you are going to say, well, everybody uses divs, and this is the modern web, and it's not going anywhere, so you need to adjust. Okay. Solve it, then. Come up with another solution that solves the problem. I don't mind what the solution is. I just mind that there's not a solution. And I think maybe that's where we're getting a little stuck. Well, we just, that's just the way it is. Well, is it, does it need to be that way? Are we asking ourselves that question with really an open mind on how we could solve this in multiple ways? The thing I really love about this spec is you could, you could make an ASP.NET 
thing accessible just by using the success criterion techniques in the spec already. They're giving you like way huge backwards compatibility. They also give it to you in a really great modern way too and you have to find where that is but it's awesome, it's possible, it's there. You can do it, we can do it. I know because I've done it. <laughs> this is Ember though, so let's get back to that. In, in true Ember fashion, there's an add-on for that. There's not quite enough add-ons for that though, so I'm not here to do the typical Ember talk where I describe the problem and then I say, oh, introducing, da da da. So yeah, we have some though. Um, these ones already exist. So if you go uh, look in the Ember A11Y GitHub repo, you will find some really cool stuff. Um, one of my newest favorite add-ons is Ember Component Attributes. Definitely check that one out. It just, it gave me so many accessibility wins because I didn't have to change my existing components. I'm gonna say that again, cause like I'm getting chills right now. I didn't have to change my existing components. It just lets me add HTML attributes to them, which, oh, that's awesome. Um, so some things, if you're an add-on author or contributor, there's some things I'd like you to try to keep in mind and maybe make them a criteria for your add-on if you wanted. Ooh, all three at once, woohoo, okay. Um, keyboard navigation, focus management. Uh, like for modals, trap your focus. There's also a difference between visible focus and screen reader focus, which is super fun to try to explain. Um, so I'm not gonna do that today, but I'm willing to help you later if you want, come find me. Um, getting the right ARIA support in there and the right semantic HTML. Oh, there we go. Render semantic HTML. And my last tip is remember, you're not alone. You might not know how to do this. And guess what? Please don't pretend that you do. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to feel bad about it. You just don't know how to do it yet. Just like all the other things we have learned over the years, I didn't know it, then I learned it. I've learned to recognize I just don't know it yet. So remind yourself you're not alone. This is not just your responsibility. You can make accessible Ember add-ons and applications. And when you get stuck, just ask. I still have to ask. We have a Slack channel for accessibility where you can ask. And if you don't know the answer, and if I don't know the answer, we'll figure it out together. It will be fine. So whether you've figured it out or you haven't, be magnanimous. This is my word for 2018. It was gonna be magnanimous or hermit because the world is just poof right now. Um, but I picked magnanimous because we're gracious, we're giving, we're generous, but we still have a little bit of ego. Kind of like Aquaman, you know? He does good stuff, but he's like, yeah, I'm Aquaman, I know. I know what's up. So let's be magnanimous. Let's, it's ambitious to be magnanimous, I think. So what if the solutions for the hard problems were in Ember by default? What if we became the first JavaScript framework to truly be like, yo, we got this. Here y'all are. What if we solved another really hard problem that all the JavaScript frameworks face? First, because we're Ember and we do that, right? Because these are the, so the solutions that our community needs, not more build tools. We need accessible solutions. So get involved. That's my call to action for you today. Mm. I have this great friend, Jetta, and she says, if you wanna show up big, you have to be big. I love it when she says that. It's just like, oh, thank you, Jetta. Um, and that's how I think about Ember, though. Ember shows up big, and it does ambitious things. And this is really the crux of my story, is I got involved. The future of my story is that I'll stay involved and I'll keep inviting you to get involved. We can do this. You can find me as Mel Sumner on Slack or Melanie R. Sumner on Twitter. 
And if you're ever in Chicago, we'd love to see you. Thank you.